Watch very carefully what happens when this street preacher confronts these two gentlemen about this being displayed in front of the First Baptist Church. Can you explain the rainbow flag? No. At First Baptist Church? Yeah. Okay, and what's the explanation? Uh, what we've, uh, we're, that's our outreach here. The Bible says you can come as you are, but are you teaching them about repentance? Paul told us about you all, that there are wolves in the church who crept in privately to draw away disciples after themselves. John told us about you all, that you were not of us, that you went away from us, that you might be manifest, that you were not of the church of God. You must tell them the truth about the Word of God. All you're doing is coddling their sin. Give me a little space. Are you Christian? We can talk civilly, but just give me space. Are you Christian? Yes, I'm a born-again Christian. Yes, can you uh, prove what you're saying by quoting Jesus instead of Paul? Sure. Okay. Jesus said in the beginning, God created them male and female so that they will multiply the earth and procreate. Are you a Christian or a Paul? Born again Christian. Then quote Christ. He's an apostle of Jesus Christ. No, no. I don't the Bible says all the word of God is given by the inspiration Listen. of the Holy Ghost Paul, and is profitable for reproof, for Listen, correction, for instruction Paul, in righteousness. Paul, so the man of God may be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, you're going to fail, sir, on the day of judgment. You will fail on the day of judgment because you distort God's word. To be honest with you, I was expecting a much better argument from these gentlemen as to why they had that flag being displayed in front of the first Baptist church. This is a Baptist church. It's not a Methodist church. And yet they had that flag being displayed in front of it. Moreover, the gentleman on the left keeps going back to John 3.16. It's as if he never read beyond John 3.16. How do you explain the flag? That rainbow flag there. How do you explain it? What's your justification for that? Let me hear it from your lips. That's a rainbow flag. What, what does it mean? What does it mean? It means diversity. Diversity? And what did God say about diversity? Uh, he said, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through the Son, Jesus. Yep, he said, he said if, you if you come after me, let him deny himself, come and take up his cross, and follow me. The Sodomites aren't denying themselves. You're coddling their sin. There's no forsaking of their sin. There's no repentance there. Jesus said, come as you are, but you must go changed. Oh, deaf ears. Say John 3, 16. Can you quote For that? God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There you go. It's what you believe. Past it's tense. what you believe that saves you. It's right. what you believe. He so loved the world, past tense. 2,000 years ago, he gave us his son. But today, we can't bank on that if we're living in sin. Oh, so I guess you're not a Christian. I believe Jesus is words. I believe his words are true. You don't believe John 3.16? You don't believe we need to repent? I don't think we're going to solve No, we're, we're, we're working. Yeah. It's called reasoning, iron sharpening iron. He knows a little bit of truth, and I know truth. So we must come to God as we are, but we must go convert it, sir. That's why Jesus came, to save us from our sins. This is the King James Bible. We speak English, so that's what we read. It's the Word of God in English. Paul is a disciple of Jesus Christ. He was inspired by the Holy Ghost. Look, on his way to Damascus, he saw a vision. Sexism, a bunch of homophobia. I do not want Paul as a part of my He life. used to persecute I the church, Christian. sir. I'm not a Paulian. Oh, I'm not you saying I'm a Paulian. Jesus. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you're going to justify this, you've got to quote Jesus if you're a Christian. The Bible says, well, Don't stop quoting I, I do quote Jesus, okay? Jesus you said, say, you Jesus said, Jesus you said you in Luke, Jesus. listen, Jesus, let me, let me say this. I heard you say, you said Jesus made a male and female. No, thank you. And then you Jesus said in Luke 13, okay, okay. Words, you're not taking well, I'll tell you what Jesus said, words in red. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. What does repent means? It means change our ways, change our mind towards sin and follow God. By the way, just so you know, John 3.16 is taken out of a dialogue between the Lord Jesus Christ and a Pharisee called Nicodemus who would later become a follower of Jesus Christ according to Christian literature. And the theme of the dialogue is being born again, which is ironic that this gentleman on the left would go to John 3 when the entire premise of the passage is on being born again. And this should be an indicator of how much those people don't care about scripture at all. But back to what he said. Uh, you have a certain interpretation. The Bible says we're built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. So the apostles were authorized by God and the Holy Spirit to write down the words from the inspiration of the Holy Ghost for us to abide by. So you don't believe in John 3.16? Yes, I do. But you, you must interpret it correctly, sir. Jesus saves you. 
Yes, but you must repent. Jesus said, unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Believe the gospel, but what did Peter say on the day of Pentecost, which the First Baptist Church doesn't abide in? After they believed and they were pricked in the heart, Acts chapter 2, 37, 38 says, and they said unto them, men and brethren, what shall we do? After they believed the gospel, Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So repentance is a requirement. It comes after we believe the gospel. We can't just come, come to Jesus and stay as we are. We're gonna go to hell that way. God's way is pure, it's holy. We must be converted. A radical change of mind, conversion. Old things, old things pass away, all things become new. Opinion. Well, but it's I not my opinion. Of, I just told you it's the word of God. All of the Christian world believes that the scriptures uh, are interpreted. Are you way. a pastor? I, I am. I'm okay. Not the pastor of the I'm but you're a, a pastor. Guest speaker. <laughs> guest speaker but, but how can you be a preacher if you don't believe the word is authorized by God? Oh, I do. So what scriptures do you read, sir? I, what Bible I version? Bible. I, I read what version? Usually the NRSV, sometimes King James, sometimes NIV. I look at the different translations to kind of get a broader... Well, you can do that with the King James Version. That's why you have a Strong's Concordance. They okay. omit from the, the Word of God. think they're more accurate translations. Well, I'm banking on this one because God preserved His Word throughout well, the... I, I respect your Okay, so the, po the point is, that. the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Do you not know? Be not deceived. Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? neither fornicator, nor idolater, nor adulterer, oh, yeah. nor the effeminate, nor According homosexuals. Paul. Okay? For one Paul, thing, the word homosexual didn't exist You're before the 19th Abusers century. of themselves with mankind. They defiled themselves with mankind. They left their first estate like the angels. What a lot of scholars wrestle with is what exactly did he mean by that? I believe in Jesus, and I believe that Jesus has saved me. I believe in me. My belief is what saves me. Okay. John 3.16, that's where I hang my hat. But Jesus said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. You just confessed it with your lips that you love Jesus, and he loves you, but your heart is far from him. Because if you had a heart after Christ, you'd obey his word. Now, if you go to verse 17 of John 3, we read this. For God did not send the Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Verse 18, he who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now, pay close attention to verses 19 to 21. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and men loved the darkness rather than the light, for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. But he who practices the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifested as having been done by God. God acted in divine love by giving us his son Jesus Christ so that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. In that same vein of thought, Jesus Christ told Nicodemus, there are those who would not believe in me and those people are already judged. Why? Because they love the deeds of the dark more than the Son of God. In fact, they hate the Son of God because they do evil. And in verse 20, Jesus said to Nicodemus, for everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light. And here comes a straight preacher with the word of God calling the First Baptist Church to the light, calling them back to Christ, calling them to repentance, and they refuse to do so. Okay. I'll tell you what, if you find any red, red, red printing in there, it says that, uh, it says that uh, gay people are going to hell, then fine. You got me. Jesus said, uh, when he was talking about uh, marriage and divorce, he said, in the beginning, God created them male and female, okay, so that they will multiply the earth and procreate. Well, that's all you got. He didn't Just actually say anything female. specifically about homosexuality. Well, his disciples did, and his father did. God did in the Old Testament, okay, and his disciples did in the New Testament, all throughout the New Testament. Timothy, Corinthians, okay, uh, Jude, okay, they leave their natural estate like the angels. And they're reserved under chains of darkness until the day of judgment. Are you going to come in and join our service today? No, thank you, sir. Why not? I'm here to preach the word of God to as many as will hear. Okay, I have a church home where we worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay? Do you we... ever quote Jesus in that church? Of course. Oh, God, it's all here, man. You just got to read. The Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Even Israel, a lot of the children of Israel, they, they died and they perished because they didn't read the word of God. And that's what's happening here. You just come into church, listen to what the pastor tells you, but you gotta get through this, you gotta dig deep in this. I'm sure you're good in history and, and, and biology books and science books, but how good are you in the Word of God? 
But when we come to Jesus Christ, we repent, forsake our sin, and become straight. Live righteously, live holy before our God. The Bible says God is holy. Only the pure in heart shall see God. It's sad that we're in a society where uh, they think everything goes with God. All you got to do is love, love, love. That's true. God is love. But he's also of God of wrath and severity. Okay? All they're teaching you here at First Baptist Church is how to love your neighbor. But if you really love your neighbor, you're going to tell them the truth. Amen. Amen. If I see that young woman's house starting to smoke, I'm going to go there and knock on the door. If she don't answer, I'm going to kick the door down. I'm going to pull her out of her bed. She's going to wonder why I'm dragging her out of bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. But when she's out safe, she's going to thank me. And she's going to watch her house go up in flames. And that's what it's about when we preach the word of God. Your toes might be stepped on. You may consider this harsh. But if you heed the words of God on the day of judgment, when God spares you, you're going to thank the preacher. But if you don't heed the words of God, I'm sorry, folks, but you're going to suffer with the wicked. There's no repentance here. There's no baptism in the name of Jesus Christ here. All you are is offshoots of the Catholic Church under your father, Tertullian. The Bible says, They that wander from the path of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. We're built on the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And when we come to God, after we believe the gospel, we repent and we get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Not in titles, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's no blood remission there. There's only remission of blood, remission of sin in the name which is above every name, and that name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says, whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and he scourges every son he receives. When I used to be a, a so-called Christian, when I was living in sin, I was a pseudo-Christian. I was a lukewarm Christian. I thought it was okay to sin and still live for God. Like this man said, hey, don't you believe in John 3.16? Of course I do. But many of you use John 3.16 as a get out of jail for free card. And it's not going to work that way. After you believe the gospel, you repent. Because if not, the Bible says, I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Revelation 3.16. That means you straddle the fence. You're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. And God's going to vomit you out of his mouth. That's what it means being a compromising Christian. That's what it means being a, 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 a passive Christian. That's what it means being a, a type of Christian who just welcomes all and never preaches repentance. Folks, I'm telling you here today, you may close the doors on me, but you're not going to close the doors on God on the day of judgment. First Baptist Church here. How far has the Baptist Church fallen? The Baptist Church, and more particularly that Baptist Church, has fallen very far. And interestingly enough, that Baptist Church is now permanently closed. Watch this. To me, this is a clear sign relating on them shutting their doors on God and now God shutting his door on them. That church is permanently closed. They have sold all their assets. It is gone. The Bible is very clear on sin. The wages of sin is death and the sin involving the rainbow flag will also damn you eternally lest you turn to Christ and repent of your sin. This is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Until next time, with love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.